Police officers of Reddit, what's the craziest situation you've been in? Post by Yokeyoyo. Definitely the time that an older, mentally ill woman tried to burn her house down because she believed that was the only way to disarm the atom bomb in her attic. I got her to walk with me to my car and get in the back by telling her it was the only place she'd be safe. When I got in and started driving, she started yelling that I couldn't take her to jail because she hadn't done anything wrong. I calmly informed her that we were going to the hospital, which prompted even louder yelling of, I'm not crazy, I replied, I don't think you're crazy. She screamed, then why are you taking me to the hospital? I told her, well, you were next to that atom bomb, right? We gotta get you checked for radiation poisoning. Her eyes got wide and she said, oh sh**, I didn't think about that, you better hurry. Showed up to a call once about a baby crying non-stop for hours and no sign of an adult being home. We went into the house and I followed the sound of the crying baby upstairs to find an 18-month-old with her arms duct taped to her crib. I undid the duct tape and it was obvious this was not the first time it had happened. I brought the child downstairs and outside. The mom was walking up the sidewalk of the housing unit and flipped shit on me. I handed the child off to a patrol and cuffed her. It was the most satisfying clicking of handcuffs I had ever heard. I hope she did a lot of time for that. Attended a structural fire in a downtown high-rise. Was tasked with evacuating local residents in case the building collapsed. Third house I went to, the guy answers in a full bunny suit with gas mask propped up in his head. English wasn't his first language, and as I was trying to communicate that he needed to evacuate, it became clear he was running a meth lab inside. Arrested Asian Walter White, and then had to sit in the shadow of the structure fire keeping eyes on the house while waiting for clear clandestine lab team to show up. In that time fire trucks basically surrounded my vehicle so I couldn't move it, even after clear team moved in. Walter had his lawyer call in my PC, and it was about 10 hours before we could head back to cells. I've never had to piss so badly in my life. Why would he answer the door with a gas mask on? The bunny suit alone would be weird as hell but he's just asking to get caught answering like that. Did a stop on a pretty obvious dope car. Driver is tweaking on meth. Passenger also tweaking and is a female that weighs 95 pounds while being 5, 8 or so. She looked like a concentration camp victim. She's offering to provide oral services in exchange for her release. Obviously I decline. Guy in the back appears to be asleep. I get his ID from the tweaking driver as my backup arrives. We get all three out, I can see needles all over the car. The guy in the back wakes up and gets out. Dispatch gives us returns, letting us know the back passenger as has a parole violation he was released early from prison IYDK for felon in possession of a firearm. The dispatcher was supposed to warn us before giving the return out loud over the radio but didn't in this case. Old dude stands up and reaches in his waistband. I see this happening in slow motion and realize it's about to get real. My partner swings from around the other side of the vehicle where he was talking to one of the other suspects. I start to yell gun in time for my partner to straight up linebacker this dude, which we got into cuffs. Had a. 45 in the waistband. I went home and hugged my son, who was one at the time. Did the dispatcher get in any trouble? She is no longer a dispatcher. I'll leave it at that. Dad tells the story of a guy he knew who kept getting caught for writing bad checks. He was such a big guy he wouldn't fit in the police car so they would just meet him at the magistrate office and write him tickets. I know, some trust, but a year or so after this kept happening, he got a call that there was a domestic dispute at the house. So they rush over there and he's got an axe in his hand sitting on the front porch all bloody. They approach and tell him to put the axe down which he does and proceeded to tell them that his wife is in the bathtub, or at least her head is. But Guy was completely open and cooperative, didn't run or anything. Asked if he could meet them at the magistrate office and dad was like yeah nah dog you're gonna have to get in the car this time. Did they find out why he killed her? Apparently there was a disagreement about finances and he just snapped. He was calm and just sitting on the porch when they showed up. Turns out he was the one who called it in. Responded with my partner to a welfare check on an elderly gentleman. Knocked on the door, walked in and couldn't find him. Went to his garage and found him sound asleep behind the wheel. 
He tried to commit suicide by asphyxiation. Thing is, he only had a small amount of fuel and it was a new Civic. He was pissed when he woke up that I wasn't St. Peter. That makes me really sad. My dad friend who is a cop in NC told me that some teen tried to steal an electric shopping cart from Target with a f ton of shit in it and tried to outrun the cops but the cart only went 5 miles per hour for like 25 meters then the battery died. The cop just asked him to push the cart back since it died and return the stolen items. Sorry for the dumb question, shopping carts have batteries? Or did I misunderstand you? Apologies if that is the case smiley face. Not sure if this is just an American thing, but many large grocery stores and supermarkets will have these scooter-like carts that shoppers can use. Usually it's for people who have mobility issues. I generally see ultra-obese people riding them. First time my brother arrested someone was really funny. He and his training officer were working the graveyard shift and got a call for suspicious activity at a house. They arrive and the homeowner says there is someone sneaking around his house that shouldn't be there. So they start looking around with their flashlights, grass is really overgrown in the backyard and my brother notice one of those Fisher Price kids car, yellow and red plastic car, moving on its own. They found their guy, naked and high AF trying to hide under the kid's toy and crawl away. Training officer says, well, he's yours rookie, had my brother cuff him, guy didn't want to go to jail and put up a naked fight and take the guy to jail. I'm touching all the candy. Not a cop, but a cop friend of mine in S.E. Washington, D.C. He got a domestic disturbance call and arrived to a calm scene. The husband explained he and his wife had been arguing, and that she had gone over the top, but they were both fine now. The wife confirmed the story, but stated she didn't want the husband back in the house that night. My friend asked if the husband had a place to go, and he agreed to go to his mother's house for the night. The husband left, then my friend and his partner left soon after. About an hour later, they get a call back to the same house. When they get there, the husband is in the kitchen dead. The wife explains that right after the police left, her husband came back and resumed arguing with her. He got in her face and she stabbed in the neck with a chicken bone, hitting his carotid artery. She felt threatened and decided to attack him with a chicken bone? Boy, I got a bone to pick with you. While serving in South Korea, my team was on patrol in the local drinking village when we heard someone drunkenly singing the U.S. national anthem. At a loss for where this individual was, we finally looked up and there he was. Tight rope walking on the ledge of a building three stories up. This is when precision of language is of vital importance. Especially when dealing with a drunk. The sergeant on scene said, hey, come down here. The drunkard said, on my way. And proceeded to step off. Under the impression I was about to witness my first death, I was in shock. Through some bit of weird luck, science, he glanced the hood of a slightly misted Daewoo truck and slid down to the ground. We ran over to him and he said, hey guys, how's it going? He had open fractures on both femurs and after some makeshift splinting and controlling the bleeding, he was transported to the nearest hospital. Soju is a hell of a thing. My dad usually relates to when people ask. 1. Staking out one of LA's homeless killers, the Skid Row Stabber. This one specifically targeted men who appeared to be homeless. So my dad was part of a task force that would assign one officer a night to be the bait. He remembers tearing up his clothes, putting them on, rolling around in the dirt, then on the street, and finally pouring a cheap bottle of whiskey out on them. He never washed this outfit so that it just got progressively nastier while he was on the task force. He would then lie down in one of the killer's known preferred areas, with his backup revolver, because of its size, underneath his body. He said he did actually manage to fall asleep a couple times, but mostly, even knowing there were a handful of nearby officers hidden and waiting for him to start screaming, he was too scared to do anything but lie there and shiver. 2. When he was a supervisor one of LA's endless car pursuits entered his division's territory. His officers joined the chase, and then entered a new division as it kept going. He knew the supervisor of that division's patrol so he hopped in a car to head over and help coordinate the chase. By the time he got there, the chase had turned to a foot chase. He radioed the other supervisor to meet him in the station parking lot as he listened to officers calling out updates on location. 
He had a gut feeling, and as he and the supervisor listened, started walking towards one of the walls. Sure enough, the suspect, completely lost, hopped over the fence. Literally caught the guy in my arms as he came over, I'll add a few others I know to be nutty but he never gives out because of various reasons. 1. The King, 92 riots. He was stationed at the infamous Rampart Station when these occurred as a patrol supervisor. We didn't see him for roughly a month, as he was often in the field managing a small group of officers who would move from one intersection to another, mounting high visibility defense for 24 plus hours to discourage rioting. This job amounted to them finding a high ground they could park the patrol cars in, half the officers would then stand around the cars in tactical gear while the other half slept in the cars. 2. Frankly, I'd say his entire nine years at Rampart were insane. The whole Rampart scandal broke out during his time there and he obviously knew and worked with most of them at some point, I knew a few of them from spending a lot of time at the station, LAPD get-togethers. Some of the most surreal bullsh** happened as part of this scandal and the movie is a goddamn travesty not just for that meme worthy AMA, but the fact it didn't tackle the wild sh** that went down. 3. Prior to Rampart he did a stint with Air Division. He relates that often as the officer, he would be strapped into a harness and then would step out of the helicopter while it was flying, and would stand on the landing skid, leaning out until the harness supported him. This was 83-86. He spent most of the LA Summer Olympics like this. 4. The one shooting he speaks about was a situation that unfortunately isn't the rarest for police, but scares the piss out of me to think about, and added to my father's existing PTSD issues from Vietnam. He and his partner were called to a domestic dispute, the neighbors called in because it was getting louder than usual. They parked on the street at the end of the driveway to the home, and the moment they exited the car, the man pushed his wife and two kids out the door on the end of a shotgun. They all proceeded to have a shouting match while the man continued to hold his wife and kids at gunpoint. They were pleading of course for him to put it down, let them go, and everything could be sorted out peacefully then. He wasn't having it. During the argument, the man pointed the shotgun at my father and his partner and fired at them. My dad and his partner returned fire at the same time. My dad ended the story there for many years, saying, the man died there, either my shot or my partner's connected, my mother filled in the blanks, the partner's shot went high, my dad's got him in the chest, just below the shoulder. He was dead before EMTs arrived. About 20 years afterwards he finally opened up about the PTSD he had from this incident we were right, and every day I think about it, there's nothing I would change about what we did. Given all the circumstances, it was the right decision. If he was willing to attempt to gun down the police, we couldn't know what would happen to his family after he had shot us. Still, I shot him and killed him while his wife and young kids stood right next to him. They might someday understand why I did what I did. Might understand what a bad person their dad was, but I still killed their dad, right in front of them, now that I'm a father too, I get exactly where he's coming from and why he can't shake the circumstances, even though he is convinced he did the best he could with the situation. I knew this kid in high school who got pulled over for a minor traffic violation. He decides it would be funny to jump out of the car and book it down the street. The cops of course go chasing after him and after a couple of blocks he stops, turns around with his hands in the air, and yells, psych. The cops didn't find it as funny as he did and they tackled him to ground and put him under arrest. I just can't imagine how crazy that must have been for the cops having someone flee like that and then turn around suddenly. This was before smartphones AMD YouTube pranksters, so the kid was just doing it because he was an idiot. He came from a wealthy family though and didn't even end up in that much trouble for it. I ain't a cop, but my dad does, and this happened when I was on a ride along with him quite a few years ago. Relatively short one this time. After eating our lunch. We went down to a runoff point so he could finish some of his reports, that's usually why you see a lot of cops on the side somewhere that isn't directly connected to the main road, I was on my phone watching some videos, when he got called in to check something that was happening up the road. I was sitting in the car the entire time this happened. Headed up the road to a construction site by that time it had been active but non-progressing for five years, where a bunch of people were just standing around looking weird. Dressed in weird suits and obvious fake construction costumes with fake hard hats. 
A representative of the construction company had called the police down when these people showed up and didn't say a single thing for hours. Backup arrived and about six cops were trying to get two dozen people to say anything. After a half hour passed, every single one of the trespassers began to dance and music began to blare from portable speakers. It went on until the song ended, at which point one of the dancers stood up and said, Danielle, Kyle has an important question for you. Everyone was motionless until the person who stood up started looking around and asked if either of those people were there. It took another five minutes before a threat of arresting everyone came to head and got the speaker to finally begin talking about what was going on. Turns out someone had hired a flash mob crew they were a bigger thing back then for a marriage proposal, but no one showed up. After all of that was done. My dad found out that the person who hired the flash mob did so to rob a jewelry store up the road and assumed that the flash mob would draw all the police to the site. Not having enough intelligence to realize a flash mob trespassing on a mostly empty machine-free yard wouldn't rank higher than an armed robbery of a jewelry store. The guy was clever in a yes yes yes, no kind of way, the idea was logical but the execution and targets were absolute dog sh he bragged about it, and was stupid enough to think that saying, you can't prove the flash mob was me. When literally no one asked him about the flash mob, he was smart but also extremely dumb. His name was actually Kyle, his wife is actually named Danielle, and he paid the flash mob crew with his own money. Dumb. I would pay to have a video of his lawyer's face, I doubt it was a fun day for them. You are an absolute legend for making it to the end. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button. And if you can't get enough, consider subscribing. See you around.